So welcome to Rurgias. Uh, my name is Flaki, which is a short for Istvan Smojanski. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you don't want to mess with that name. Uh, so, and this is my co-presenter, Bela. Uh, and I'm going to, um, to show, uh, first of all, uh, I'm doing, I'm a JavaScript developer. I do a lot of different things. I do a lot of open source stuff. Uh, you're going to hear a great talk from a Tesla project me uh, member tomorrow. For now, I'm going to show you different hardwares, uh, but still JavaScript and, and other uh, stuff on the hardware. And I'm a front-end trainer at, at DPC Consulting and a like, long-time Mozilla contributor. He's too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and just a disclaimer. Uh, if you ever heard of the Rust language, the Rust language uh, before 1.0 came out, they had this on the website that Rust is in unstable and it could do all sorts of things, including eating your laundry. So whatever I'm showing you is exact same thing. Very unstable, very demo, very work in progress. Uh, hopefully it won't eat your laundry, uh, but we'll see about that. Yeah, no promises. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is what happens when you mix JavaScript, the web of things, which is IoT, but you put the web, uh, web platform in, the, in uh, the front, and games. So what happens is a tool called Cloudibar. Uh, spoiler alert, what I'm showing you on the GIF, uh, the slides will be uploaded, so if you want to review them, I will show a link later. But I'm gonna show this uh, live, so you can experience the Cloudyboy experience. So what Cloudyboy is, uh, it grew up, uh, grew out for a need for something to do. Whoever did they hear uh, Arduino? Arduino, ever, ever blink the lights with an Arduino? So, so here's the thing, when you first get into hardware, they put, uh, even now, they, you, know, you buy your Arduino or you know, Raspberry Pi and you do your hello world into hardware, you blink the lights on it, and then you're like there, okay, so what now? And I, I tell you, uh, games and playing is like, you know, uh, homo ludens, uh, it's play, playing man. So uh, if you want to get somebody excited about something, uh, let, 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 uh, let them pay, uh, play games. Or, and what's even better than playing games is actually creating games. So there is a, uh, there is a device uh, that's called the Order Boy, and the other one, the Tiny Arcade, I'm also going to talk about in a bit. Uh, this came out on Kickstarter. Most of the stuff on this table is on Kickstarter. And it looks like that. So, uh, it looks like that. It's basically nothing else than an Arduino hooked up to a screen and hooked up to some, uh, you know, buttons and a buzzer to emit sound. So, uh, this is a word exclusive, ex except if you do Twitter, because then you have seen this already. Let me introduce you uh, the Chrome offline uh, application. If you've ever been offline on Chrome, uh, running in a browser uh, when you are offline, show Chrome showing you this little mini game. Let me introduce you run, that running on a uh, Arduino grade microcontroller. And for some extra extra hype, I made a a RuJS version. So let me try to turn this on. There you go. Okay, so what about this? So this is basically C and C++ code. This, yeah, you, obviously you can play it. Uh, and uh, if you're not very good at it, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, Dino. Okay. So uh, what that is, is basically you are creating C or C++ code that runs on a microcontroller. This device, you can see, it's, uh, it's like $40. Um, it's basically this. So if you look at it, it's basically an Arduino microcontroller, a screen, some buttons, and a battery pack that runs like for four hours or five hours from a single charge. And you can flash a game on it, 
and you can play the game uh, on the device. So yeah, that's actually, that's actually my uh, rendition, so that you believe me that there really is nothing, nothing very special in there. So let me, all right, there you go. So it's basically the same, same device. And now I'm gonna turn this on. And it's the same game. Uh, a problem has happened on the way here, so I actually lost the button uh, from the contraption. Some people will say, uh, tell you that I've lost the button a long time ago. Don't believe them. <laughs> so, so here is, a, uh, because this is just hardware, this is how I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna uh, have this wire and try not to electrocute me myself while I try to jump with this thing that I know. <laughs> And actually, closer to hardware, even better than this game. So yeah, there you go. So wh why did I show you this contraption? To show you that this is open source hardware. This is just, you know, you hooking up, you wait for a month until your uh, uh, device hardware arrives from uh, China, from your favorite eBay buyer, and then you hook, up, hook it up on a breadboard and it works. So what's cool about it is, is it also has like an open source community you know, open source hardware, open source game library, and it's open source fun, because people are just uploading their games they're creating, and you can just download them and flash it in your device and have it on your back pocket uh, every time and then uh, to, you know, when you go on the underground or uh, when you uh, have a few minutes to spare, you just play these games. So what's good about that is, is, is it actually uh, a very nice, uh, gives you a very nice uh, audience that you, if you, a very nice compelling audience to build games. And there you stand, okay, so how do I create games for this thing? So, uh, I create, a, because have you, have, if you ever played with the R Arduino IDE, it's not the nicest thing on earth that you would want to get into, and that's even just the IDE, then you uh, get into C or C++ and then it's over. So, uh, so what I created, um, and then you go into the library itself, and you want to create games. So I have this, uh, I have this game here. I have the source code for it uh, up in the up in the screen. So if you uh, if you want to create like a a, a game in this, uh, you would have to you know need images like the RuleJS logo. So here's what it looks like in Ardu in an Arduino IDE. That's that's how it looks like. It's basically binary data embedded in your source code. So here is it, here it is, and let's get back to what Cloudaboy is. Uh, if you know some HTML5 and JavaScript, you could just build a tool in a browser in a, in, on the web that could actually make a lot of this experience much easier. Uh, so this is not really a, a product sales pitch for the Arduboy, uh, but uh, imagine that you give, a, give people a tool that they could uh, build games for a tiny device that just shipped to like 10,000 people in the world from Kickstarter. Uh, that's some motivation. So I wanted to ease uh, their job, and obviously my job, in uh, creating games for this tiny device, because this is basically games running on, uh, you know, and 10 days, uh, 10 years ago, and 20 years ago, uh, on a Atari or something like that. It, uh, they were the same. Uh, but this this one is like a 16 megahertz one. The other one I'm going to should be showing you is 48 megahertz, 32 bit. So it's even like a, a low-grade Pentium uh, computer. So you could create stuff for these, uh, for these uh, devices, but how do you do that? Obviously, you will have to know some coding. Uh, you will have to know like C or JavaScript. If you know JavaScript and you look through this, uh, this code, it actually looks pretty familiar. There are like uh, calls in there, there are some type, uh, uh, there are time, uh, type annotations and stuff like that, but it's basically just uh, calling library APIs. So uh, I wanted to create a tool that uh, eases any other parts of that uh, creating a game, which is basically compiling a game, because for those Arduino uh, devices, you will have to have, uh, the Arduino IDE will have to compile your code, and you, you will have to flash it like literally on the device's memory card. So how you do that is actually you hook this, uh, the device up, uh, you hook the device up via USB, and, 
And you can uh, compile the code and use a special tool to upload that. So I was a JavaScript developer, so I, I was looking for a JavaScript uh, uh, method to solve that. When I came across Electron, so Electron has the ability to actually create like uh, applications that run in the background. What you see here is actually an Electron application that connects to the USB port and can flash any image to the device. So when you have Electron, that's basically Node.js, so you have network access. So here's a, uh, here it is. How about we create a network connected uh, uh, editor? So, the, uh, so then I had my, my client side thing that could flash my games into the device. So now I can go into this web page. You could see it's, it's called cloudboy.slsw.hu. And there is a URL, uh, Cunning Pancake Maker, which is my secret code for my game. And my, uh, the secret code for my game. Uh, well, uh, I just set the secret code for my game. And I, if I do any modifications, I can just uh, click this icon. You will, see, uh, you will see the device flash once or twice, and it will upload the new image. What happens in the background, actually, this is just a, a front end for my, for my application. Uh, this is just uh, for editing my code. What happens in the background is on every editing, the code is sent to a server and it's recompiled to an Arduino compatible uh, image, which will then, when I click the button, down, be downloaded to my computer and be flashed on the device. So that's pretty neat because I don't need to, uh, don't need to compile the stuff on my, my own computer. I can actually use this IDE from any other device. I can use this from a tablet and I can still uh, you know, edit the code and recompile it in the, in the background. All I need this computer for is just flashing uh, the image. But once you did that, you actually have a web page. You do stuff in JavaScript, and JavaScript lets you know it's, it's a very vivid language, and HTML5 has a lot of APIs like the Canvas API that can make your days very easy. So here's what I created. Instead of this ugly uh, binary code, I actually created an editor for this. And I'm gonna go with the, my favorite one because dinos are cool, but how about dragons, huh? So I'm gonna create a dragon here. So I'm gonna draw wings, you know. I even, you know, let's add some flames in there. That should do. And when I hit this button, it will save the image. You will see it, I will reload the page. Hopefully it saved the image. And it saved the, the, the binary representation on the fly. So what happens now, if I just you know, hit the flash button again, it recompiled automatically in the background. My flasher will show up, and it will flash the new image. And there you go. There is a teleporting dragon on there. So now you are playing with a dragon. And yeah, it still works. So if you, uh, if you go along this way, okay, so now I have something that works in any browser. Uh, do you mean any browser like any browser? Oh yeah, so let me, you know, oh like uh, there is this, uh, there's this cloud that goes on. So if I play, you can see uh, there is this, there you go, should have made a faster animation, there you go. There is a cloud up there. You see, it just parallaxes in the background. So how about making that, whatever. I cannot make a badger out of it, but let's try like a bat or something. So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna click this. My editor shows up. But remember, this is again, this is in a web browser. So let me see if I can make this update in real time from a phone because this is just the web, this is just the internet. So I'm gonna enter the address, cld.bi. I have the secret code, which is uh, Cunning Pancake Maker. So I'm gonna go Cunning, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna open this, because you haven't seen the, the web page yet. So this will just, uh, Wi-Fi permitting, see there is this web page that I loaded, and you can create your own funny secret names like, you know, rapid tiger, whatever, quick banana cake, or, 
uh, you know, rapid fish log. Uh, but we are going to go with Cunning Pancake Maker this time. So it's Cunning. You don't have to mess with, you know, uh, QR codes and NFC and whatever. And I'm not very good when Pancake Ugh, Maker. Okay, it's just a second. Let's go. So it's gonna load an editor. It's uh, it mit, uh, it's missing a few media queries there, but there you go. We have a cloud here. Whoops. Uh, let me click again. All right. There you go. So let's see if I can get this. Get this to a bat in like some time. Okay, this should be easier. It's gonna be a very amorph bat. <laughs> Not your usual Batman. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's working out all right. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Better than nothing. <laughs> So I'm gonna click this icon. Oh, it did work out pretty all right. Let's see if it compiled. Yeah, it should be. And I'm gonna hit the flash button, see what happens. Okay, we are off. Ta-da! There is a dragon. And let me see if I can play for, uh, good enough that you can actually sh see the bat show up there. <laughs> well, it's not much different than the cloud was, arguably. <laughs> it, it looks like a squid, arguably. Okay. <laughs> so there you go, there you have it. You have the device, because it just connects to the internet, you can have interoperation between devices. You can, uh, you can just use this thing to create stuff uh, out of your out on them. So, okay, that's boring. Let's go on uh, to the future of uh, creating your own games. So why is this good? Uh, because, you know, uh, this, the whole thing came uh, when we did this web workshop. Uh, it's called Happy Code Friends. Uh, it's basically teaching people who never, code, never, never did coding before HTML5 and JavaScript. It, it has very uh, different incarnations in countries. Ours is called Happy Code Friends, and we realized that outside of, you know, uh, Max Argan's JavaScript for cats, there aren't all too many, like, e easy beginner JavaScript materials. So we came up with something that's called, uh, uh, that's called Code Invaders. So what we want to do in COVID Code Invaders is actually to create a game in JavaScript uh, using the canvas in, and teach you the basics of coding uh, in the process. If you have seen Code Maven, it's uh, very similar, except now you, uh, you actually get a game out of it by the end of the course. So it's still ongoing and still, you know, you're still working on it, but I can show you something so here's the thing, here's the, here's the Code Invaders JavaScript code. Not this one, but this one. Uh, you know, you have a canvas. Um, it basically, you have a canvas. Uh, you set up some event listeners for keyboard strokes. Uh, you know, you draw some, some images and you update, you animate it. It's basically less than 100 lines of code and it, that even uh, already does, you know, firing off projectiles and stuff like that. So I think I have a demo. There we go. Yeah, that's a live demo. That's an iframe in there, and I hope, yeah, it works. Yeah, it doesn't kill anyone because we are pacifists. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. How do you get this code onto, onto a microcontroller? And the answer is, you know, you use uh, plain old HTM5 and JavaScript, and you can actually transpile most of this code into C or C++ and compile the image assets to get it to the device. 
So this is, this is the future, uh, but I do have like a command line tool that can actually do that. So I'm gonna show you the Arduino code for this. It's basically like 10 lines more, uh, but it also includes some, uh, some extra comments. It's basically, you know, download the assets, the PNGs, and make sure they are encoded in binary format, you know, uh, add some type annotations to your variables, you know, convert the canvas calls to like uh, library calls in C++, and basically the same thing, update and, uh, and, and render your game. So I'm gonna just copy this code just real quick into my editor, paste it, I'm gonna reload it to see, you know, oops, come on, come on. I might have acted too quick. Oh, there you go. So we have, we have our li lovely tiny space emulators in there. So I'm just gonna know, you know, just like old times, I'm gonna flash this on the device. It's flashing, it's flashing, it's flashing. And then I got this on the device. Exact same thing, from the JavaScript code to C or C++, running on a 60 megahertz device. I fire it will. <laughs> so where does that take? Uh, where does this take uh, take us? Uh, so if you want to teach somebody, you know, basic coding skills, could it be any easier than teaching someone to create something in a browser? You know, everybody has a browser. Everybody has a computer uh, of some sorts, at least. Uh, you can just teach them JavaScript. Uh, they just open a web page. They don't have to download anything. They don't have to compile anything. They ju uh, you just uh, throw them to a web page that teaches them basic JavaScript skills, skills while they go creating a game. And while you are at it, you can also tell them, hey, uh, you, can actually, uh, you can actually teach, uh, teach them the basics of hardware. You can tell them, hey, uh, now that you built your game, you can actually, you know, hook this screen up to a few buttons, and you can actually run your game on this tiny device that you just created. No lead blinking, but you know, here is the thing that you can make, uh, uh, make a tiny hardware device that you could push buttons and blow up space invaders with it and save the world. So, uh, if you want to, uh, want to get someone excited about technology, you, want, you have to grab them, uh, grab their attention. And I think that's, that might be one way to do that. So, this is, like I told you, uh, is all very, uh, very uh, uh, experimental. Uh, but what's in it on the long term, uh, outside of getting people to, into coding? Uh, well, the IoT and the, uh, the hardware revolution that's going uh, on it really make us, made us uh, reconsider the uh, notions of the responsive design and, and uh, running cross-platform code. And JavaScript is one of the biggest and most uh, useful uh, machines to run uh, cross-platform code on. And it has a lot of API, a lot of accessibility, a lot of tutorials. So. Uh, I really want to uh, make this uh, conform more to the web standards and create actual cross-platform applications. So you don't just run it on a device, but it will actually, uh, actually uh, at, uh, adapt to the device you're actually running it on. And that's where we get to, to this other device. Whoever heard of this device? It's called the Tiny Arcade. Okay, oh, there is someone. Okay, so the tiny arcade is just that, a tiny arcade, a tiny arcade machine that's built on uh, Arduino technology. It's a, a bit beefier hardware, it's a color screen, you have Flappy Bird in there, uh, so, but, you do the, but it uses the exact same things. Uh, you have some libraries in there, you use the Arduino IDE and you can flash games on it. And uh, you can actually flash any kind of application on them, not just games. It actually uses the same, uh, same processor that the Tesla 2 does. It's a small microchip, a 48 megahertz microchip. Uh, so here's the thing. This has a 96 by 65 uh, pixel color screen. The other device has a 128 uh, pixel by 64 pixel screen, and it's uh, two colors, or uh, monochrome. And you can actually, uh, you run this stuff on a browser, and you can see if I just open the JavaScript code, just real quick, code invaders, you will see that, you know, I added some CSS transitions in there. 
So how do you, de, uh, how do, you do progressive applications and that actually adapt to the devices that, that work on that is exactly what I'm working on. So adding uh, JavaScript, combining JavaScript to C, C++ is much easier uh, than actually trying to re-implement uh, CSS media queries on the hardware. So wish me luck or, you know, uh, join me in the fight because obviously this all is, uh, uh, all these things are open source. So uh, if you want to, you know, try this out, uh, there is a, a Twitter channel you can sign up for updates and there is a GitHub repo uh, you're well, more than welcome to check out and, and uh, help me build the next version of this. And you know, just find me if you're interested in anything else. So you will find the slides on this link. Uh, the slides have a lot of links that uh, could get you going. And I wish you good luck, and I hope you enjoy your first steps into hardware if you uh, ever do that uh, via Cloudy Boy. You can reach, me out, uh, reach out to me on there, and thank you for your uh, time.